ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما مزيدا My dear brothers and sisters in today's khutbah we're going to reflect on an ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an ayah which came in surah al-anfal verse 24 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us in the name of iman ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believed and as abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said that whenever you hear ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believed pay close attention because it's either khair good that you're going to be called to or shar evil you're going to be told to stay away from so every time you read in the quran pay extra attention special attention when you hear the verse say ya ayyuhal ladina amanu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in surah al-anfal calls us in the name of iman ya ayyuhal ladina amanu istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul to answer to respond to allah and his messenger idha da'akum lima yuhyikum if they call you to that which gives you life وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ And know that Allah intervenes between the man in his heart and that you will return to him. You will return to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be held accountable. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah commands us to respond. to answer to the command of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this ayah there's four main lessons that we want to benefit today inshallah ta'ala first is answering and responding to the command of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and responding to the command of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we need to constantly remind ourselves that it's not something that's optional for the believer the true believer is not the one who has the option of his affair to choose what he wants from the deen and to leave other things this is suitable for me so i'll take this this is a bit difficult so i'll leave this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa ma kana li mu'minin wa la mu'minatin idha qada allah wa rasuluhu amran an yakuna lahum al khairatu min amrihim وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا That it's not up to the believing male or female. If Allah or His Messenger have passed the ruling, that they have the choice in their affair. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, then they have clearly gone astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the other verse, about the qawl of the mu'mineen, if they are called to Allah and his messenger what is their answer ay yaqulu sami'na wa ata'na that they say we hear and we obey this is the way of the true believers wa ulaika humul muflihun these are the ones who are the successful ones the ones who answer the command of Allah and his messenger inna ma kana qawl al mu'minin idha du'a ila Allah wa rasul if they are called to Allah and his messenger li yahkum baynahum to pass a judgment that they immediately say sami'na wa ata'na we hear and we obey wa ulaika humul muflihun and these are the successful ones the ones who answer to come the command of Allah and of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and from the beautiful things in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us one of the hikmas one of the wisdoms and what we gain and what we benefit when we answer to the command of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said idha da'akum lima yuhyikum and this my dear brothers and sisters if we reflect on this meaning 
it shows us the beauty of the religion of Islam. And it shows us the greatness of the religion of Islam. That we are Abid, we are the slaves, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to fulfill the command. We have to stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to stay away from. But yet, everything that they called us to, everything that Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to do, or told us to stay away from, it gives us life. If they call you to that which gives you life, that which gives you purpose, that which gives you direction. And look at anything that we have in the Sharia, any command that we're commanded to do, and you'll see the wisdom behind it. Look at anything that we're forbidden from doing, and you'll see the wisdom behind it. You'll see that it gives you life. When people are searching for peace of heart and peace of mind, we find it in the Salat. We find in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatmainu al-qulub, that indeed, through the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find assurance. At the time of difficulty, if he faced any trouble, alayhi salatu wa salam, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would race to the prayer. He used to say to Bilal radiallahu an, arihna biha ya Bilal, let us find relaxation through the prayer. We were commanded to give from the zakat. We're purifying and cleansing ourselves when we give the zakat. The things that we're told to stay away from. Do not come close to the fornication. That it's immoral and an evil way. Look at what's happening to those who fall into illegal sexual activities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the time we live in especially, has shown us with the sexually transmitted diseases and all of that. Don't drink alcohol. Look at the harms that come from alcohol. Subhanallah. We were debating in England some time back with some non-Muslims about the issue of alcohol and the harms of alcohol and even some non-Muslims brought up to the government the ill effects that alcohol has on the society. And they said, but they pay their taxes and the government benefits from the taxes. So they paid 12.6 billion in taxes. They came from the National Health Services and they said, but the diseases that we had to cure from the alcohol was over 15 billion. SubhanAllah. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger calls you to, it gives you life. There's reason behind it, there's hikmah behind it. When you implement the command, or you stay away from it, there's benefit in it, there's hikmah in it. It's upon us to reflect on this. And when we reflect on these things, this is what increases our iman. It increases our faith, it increases our yaqeen, our certainty with the greatness of this deen. Anything that you can bring, you'll find that Islam has the solution. You'll find that any command, there's life, there's the direction. It's, it gives you peace of heart when you implement the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us about those who turn away. Those who do not answer and do not respond to the command of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa'lamu and take it as a principle in tafsir. Whenever you hear, hear in the Quran, wa'lamu and know something important is about to be said. Wa'lamu anna Allah yuhulu bayn al mar'i wa qalbi. And know that Allah intervenes between the individual and his heart. Meaning that when we are reminded, we're shown the right way and we continue to turn away. We continue to turn away. Eventually, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us go astray and leaves us to our own selves, leaves us to our own desires, and to the heart becomes so covered in sin that it doesn't know that which is ma'roof, that which is good, and it doesn't deny that which is munkir, that which is evil. This is what happens when Allah intervenes. The khair doesn't come to your heart because you turned away. You refuse, you refuse to answer and respond to the command of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is very dangerous. It's very scary if you reflect on this meaning. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
as it came from the hadith of Umm Salama radiallahu anha in Sunan al-Tirmidhi where she said the most dua, akthar dua kan yad'u bihi in Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua with was what? Allahumma ya muqallab al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik O oh Allah, the control of the hearts make my heart firm upon your religion why did he make dua with this dua so much? What's the reason behind it? Alhamdulillah, Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, you make dua with this dua so much. Why? He said to her, alayhi salatu wa salam, that there's no heart except for it's between Isba'im and Asabi rahman yuqallibuhu kayfa yasha. That there's no heart except for it's between two of the fingers of a Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. He changes it as he pleases. Allah changes the heart as he pleases. Therefore the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to constantly beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep his heart on the, on, uh, firm on the haqq. And he's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep him firm on the haqq. So how about us? How much do we need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on the truth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended this ayah by saying, وَعْلَمُوا وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشِرُونَ And to him you will return. And to him you will return. You will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be resurrected, to be held accountable for your deeds. And there's going to be one of two outcomes when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa showed us the outcome of those who obey and answer to His command and those who turn away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tilka hudud Allah. That these are the boundaries of Allah. The boundaries that Allah has set. This is haram. Don't go past it. Do you need to stay inside the boundaries and do the actions inside the boundaries? Did you do it or not? Did you obey or did you disobey? Pay attention. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, He follows the Quran and the Sunnah, answers to the command of Allah and His Messenger. What does He get in return? What is the outcome for the one who obeys Allah and His Messenger? يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِهَا لَنْهَا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا He enters him into the Jannah with which beneath rivers flow to be there eternally. وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ And this is the great achievement. And on the other hand, the other ones who disobey Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger and he transgresses the boundaries. And I want all of us to just stop for a minute to reflect how many of us fall into this category. How many orders and commands from Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam come to us and we disobey. How many commands come to us and we turn away? How many times have we transgressed the boundaries and those limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid down clearly for us in the Quran and that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid down clearly for us in his sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam. How many of us fall into that category? What is the outcome for these people? Yudkhilhu nara. Yudkhilhu nara. He will enter him into the fire. Khalidan fiha. Walahu adabu muhin. He will be there eternally in the hellfire and he will have a humiliating punishment. This is the outcome for those who follow the command that came in this ayah. Istajibu lillahi wa. To answer, to respond to Allah and His Messenger. If they call you to that which gives you life, 
بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآية والحكمة أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبي المصطفى وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's khutbah, we reflected on one verse from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we stop and we reflect, sometimes we read these verses just getting through them, just to get the ajr, get the barakah of reading the Quran. But if we were to stop and to reflect on the reality of these verses, one khutbah, and we went into some of the detail. This verse, I went into more than one episode on a TV show, just explaining this one verse, because of how deep it is, and how important it is for us to reflect on these meanings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us in the name of Iman, as Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh said, pay close attention. We know it's very important what's about to, become, what's about to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us in the name of Iman, Ya ayyuhu ladheena amanu, O you will believe, 89 times in the Quran to pay special attention to what's going to be said in these ayat. Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul idha da'akum lima yuhiikum. Subhanallah. The true believer when he reflects on this meaning, he knows that it's a command, he has to do it. He doesn't have an option. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows him something amazing, something beautiful. Idha da'akum lima yuhiikum. If they call you to that which gives you life, gives you direction, understanding. There's so much wisdom behind every single thing that we do. Every single command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, there's wisdom behind it. It's upon us to reflect on them. Sometimes when we sit down with some brothers and we reflect on the, some of these meanings, people are like, wow. Even though we've been doing things for years, some brothers 50 years old, 60 years old, 40 years old, and they've been doing these commands, but they never reflect on why they do them. And a Muslim who wants to benefit from his deen is not just the one who does, does the things as a routine, as a custom, but he reflects on why I do them. Even in the Salat, how many people pray for many years and don't know what they're doing, don't know why they're doing it? Why do I say Allahu Akbar so many times in the Salat? What's the, what's the wisdom? What's the hikmah behind it? Don't know, just do it. I was taught to do it. I say Allah Akbar. I move up and down. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes we don't know the words of the, mean, the meanings of the words at all. But if you reflect on every single movement in the Salat, every single word, each one of them has a hikmah behind them. Each one of them has wisdom. And this in the Sharia, every single aspect of the Sharia, there's wisdom in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who created us. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's bad for us. He knows what's suitable. He knows what's not suitable. So it's upon us to come and to reflect on these commands and see where does it give us life? How can we benefit? What is the wisdom behind it? And when we do this, we increase in our iman, and our yaqeen. Our iman, our faith, and our yaqeen, our certainty. And as Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said, Rahimahullah, وَبِالْ إِيمَانِ وَالْيَقِينِ يَنَالِ الْإِمَامَ فِي الدِّينِ That with iman and yaqeen, you reach the high levels of the deen. When you reach the certainty, <coughs> and you have the strong iman, that's when you reach the high levels and you benefit from your deen. وَعْلَمُوا and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَحُولُ بَيْنِ الْمَرِّ وَقَلْبِهِ that he comes between the individual and his heart. He intervenes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflect on his meanings. Reflect on why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua that Allah would make his heart firm on the religion. And he's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ That all of us are going to be resurrected يوم القيامة to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be held accountable for every single thing that we did in this dunya. And we stand in front of Allah, Allah is going to ask us, didn't you know you were supposed to answer, you were supposed to respond to my command and to the command of my messenger? 
What is your answer going to be when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you going to be from those who answered the command and tried his best? Or are you going to be from those who denied it? Or are you going to be like most of the Muslims who like to play on both sides of the fence? Little halal, little haram. Little istijaba, responding, and a little bit of adam istijaba, not responding. Playing on both sides of the fence. It's, it's, it's like gambling. You're gambling with Jannah and, and Hellfire. That's what it is. Or you're going to be from those who tried his hardest and implement it, implement it, and answer the command and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say, I did my best, Ya Allah. I, tr- I strived, Ya Allah. And you have the proof in front of you from your actions. Reflect on this stance when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what your answer is going to be. بَدَأَ بِي بِنَفْسِهِ ثُمَّ ثَنَّ بِي مَلَائِكَةِ الْكِرَامِ فَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا وَيَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَيْهِ بِوَاحِدَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِعَشْرَ اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانم على نبينا محمد وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وان سائر الصحابه اجمعين اللهم اعز الاسلام المسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام المسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اللهم اعداءك اعداء الدين اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها ربنا اننا ظلمنا لم ننفسنا ولم تغفرنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات ربنا حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم ان نسالك ان تكون عونا ومعينا لاخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار وقيموا الصلاه يرحمكم الله